Velina mai kako, and welcome to another episode of Roots Hawaii. My name is Walter Kavaiaia, your host. Today's episode is entitled My Filipino Roots, The Life's Journey of Renowned Businesswoman, Bennett Isalusha. I'd like to introduce uh, Bennett. Uh, Bennett Misalusha is a seasoned executive and government affairs consultant who has handled sensitive and challenging issues in the past. She brings a wealth of experience and core skills to any project she is involved in. Bennett is deeply involved in community and nonprofit work in Hawaii. She is the managing editor of the Philam Courier, the state's foremost and oldest Filipino publication. She is a member of the Board of Regents at Chaminade University, a member of the Community Advisory Board for Hawaii Public Radio, a past chair of the Girl Scouts of Hawaii, and sits on the boards of Oahu Transit Services, the bus, the Filipino Chamber of Commerce, the Filipino Community Center, and the Kauai Philippine Cultural Center. Bennett's work has earned her many distinctions, such as recognition as Woman of Distinction in Banking by the Girl Scouts of Hawaii, the United Filipino Community Council's Award in Banking and Finance, the state's Mother of the Year for American Mothers Incorporated, and one of the top 10 women volunteers in Hawaii by Pacific Business News, and was named Woman Advocate for the Year for Education by the Filipino Women's Civic Club. She is also an alum of the Pacific Century Fellows Program, Hawaii's version of the White House Fellows. She has two adult children, Christian and Daniel. Welcome and aloha, Bennett. Thank you, Walter. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you very much. And it's an opportune time because actually this month we celebrate, the nation celebrates Filipino American Heritage Month. Oh my goodness. And are there, I'm, I'm assuming there's a variety of activities that are going on all over the all over the country. All over the country. Yes. In Hawaii, uh, we just had our Filipino Community Center Gala, which is oh. part of that. We have Filipino film festivals that are happening. There are a smattering of uh, activities, all intended to link us and, and, and uh, make sure that we stay connected to our Filipino American roots. Well, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, in, in, in the world of genealogy and, and family history that many of us are involved in, the, the buzz phrase now is, discover, gather, and connect. And it all has to do with our, you know, connecting with our roots. So are these, I'm going to imagine that uh, a lot of uh, people from the community at large, you know, aside from the Filipino community, attend these events. Oh, particularly, yes. But, you know, the Filipino community has such a, a, a wonderful history in Hawaii. Of course, um, we started in 1906 when there were 15 Filipinos who came to the islands and they were recruited by the plantation to uh, be part of the workforce. As you know, there were many, many other ethnic groups that came, but the Filipinos were one of the last ones. And from that humble beginnings, now we have 25% of the uh, state's population that are Filipino American ancestry. That's quite a, That's, a you number. Know, you shared that mm -hmm. with me earlier, and I was yes. like, I didn't realize it was that large. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious. So uh, what was the year that the first? 1906. 1906. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, from what particular place in the Philippines did that first group come from? From the Ilocos region. You know, um, in fact, in, if you look at our, our existing uh, amalgam of, of where they're coming from, I would say 80% of our Filipinos here in Hawaii are from that north, from that northern part of the Philippines. Um, of course, the Philippines is a very diverse uh, country. We have 7,100 islands. Oh my goodness. And our language, yes, we speak many languages. Um, I think as of last count, there's like 180 uh, languages, real languages, and about 150 dialects. So <laughs> the national language, though, is Filipino or Tagalog. Okay. But here in Hawaii, what's most prevalent is Ilocano. So when, you know, when people gather, you would probably hear Ilocano being spoken. I mean, I'm curious, so back at home in the Philippines, with that many different dialects smattered throughout, I mean, I didn't realize there were that many yes. islands consisting, you know, making up the Philippines. 
Do the, the, the culture, the variant dialects or cultures, are they able to communicate? Well, that's the reason why back in the 60s, they had to establish a national language. Because by virtue of uh, the fact that we have, we're so divided uh, landmass-wise, there has to be a unifying factor. And so Tagalog became the national language. And it's taught in schools, just like how English is taught in schools. Um, the major um, businesses are transacted both in English and, and Filipino. And then also, um, we, our films are in Tagalog. Uh, but albeit there are pockets of, you know, like very strong regionalism, like the Ilocanos, for instance, are very proud of their, their heritage and legacy. And same thing for the Visayans, the, Vis the Cebuanos. So um, again, it's a very proud country. Um, we have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be proud about. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, that's good. It's a good thing to be proud of where you come from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that helps to provide some, you know, bonding, you know, always as a community. I mean, I liken it here in Hawaii. I mean, you know, as Hawaiians, we take pride from the island that we come from because that's kind of how we converse. You know, mm -hmm. when we meet each other, oh, so where were you born? What, island, yes. what high school you went yes. to? You know, what's your family name? What's, you know, that kind of thing. It's all about genealogy and connecting and roots. So when was the first um, ancestor in your family ever I'm, come I'm to first work? generation. Oh, you're first yes, generation. Yes, yes. My oh. parents moved to San Francisco, but I chose to come to Hawaii thinking that um, I would go back to the Philippines because I had a job waiting for me there. Uh, but as it turned out, I got married here to a local person who was born and raised here, but of Filipino ancestry. And so my children, um, of course, were born here, and this is home. This is home. Well, you know, we want to, uh, we have a lot to talk about yes, today. And yes. so I want to ask our uh, engineer if he could sh uh, put up on the screen our first black and white. There you go. So who are we looking at here? Yeah, that's my grandfather, Luciano and Carmen Misalucha. Uh, we come from humble beginnings. They my, my father's roots are from Bicol, Camarines Sur. I mean, um, sorry, Buhi Camarines Sur. And then on my mother's side, um, she's Caviteña. And unfortunately, I couldn't dig up, you oh, know, yeah, uh, pictures from my mother's side. But um, again, very loving uh, traditions. My, my mother came from Tagaytay. Um, no. That's my mother. That's yeah, she was she's beautiful and, yeah, and she's say, eighty five years old. Yes, oh my now and, and it, by any chance would that be you? That yes, she's, that is you. <laughs> okay, everybody, take a picture. There we go. I know, I know. <laughs> it's always good. I love looking. I, you know, for some reason, I love black and whites over colored pictures. I don't know what it is. I connect well with uh, with those pictures. You look very cute, by the way. Thank man. you. But you know what? Um, there are there are three daughters. And uh, my grandma used to say that we cannot compare ourselves to the beauty of our moms and our mom, yeah. because she was she was like a beauty queen in her own right when she when she was single. And um, but to this day, um, she's so still kikai. I, I oh. tease her about it because she's eighty five, but she, still very well put together. Now, does mom live here? Or she's no, no, not? she she moved. She used to live here. Uh -huh. uh, was in the states for more than twenty five years, but then decided when my father passed away to go back to the Philippines and be where it, everything is familiar. So she lives in the Philippines. So the, there's five of us. I'm the oldest of five children, uh, three girls and two boys. So it's girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Wow. And um, so the girls all live in the States. I have, a, I have a sister in Utah, another sister in Texas, but the two boys chose to stay in the in Philippines. Philippines. And um, one brother works for Philippine Airlines. So thankfully, I have that <laughs> privilege <Yes. laughs> to be able to go back and forth to the Philippines at a reasonable you know, rate, and I can visit mom. Oh, nice. Um, we'll ask Eric to throw up our next uh, picture. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, uh, this no, was, is that mom? That's mom. And uh, if you notice the color coding, yes. so whoever belongs okay. to, yes. So there are... Um, as of last count, 20 grandchildren out of the five uh, children. And uh, everybody, we are a very loving, amazing family. Well, I could just tell. And I, I saw you on the end there. Yes. That, was it navy blue or correct, black? Correct, yeah, yeah. It was very nice. 
You know, my wife comes uh, from a large family from North Kohala, so mm. I can identify with that yes. picture. Um, and we, her family has had, well, my mother-in-law was the fourth oldest of 14 children. And they all were there for, in Kohala. And the first, we, they've been having family reunions for the last 16 years. And at the first family reunion, there were close to 450. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that came out. And my, they, they were very consistent in having them. And as a result, you know, our children were young then, but they were able to grow up in all of the cousins in that yes. same generation. So, you know, that, I realized I love how, big families. how huge of a benefit it is to connect that way. You know, because families are spread out some, you know, often. My son just got married to um, Carolyn Dunley. Um, her roots are Ohio, although oh, her okay. family lives in Boston. But get this. So the father is the second of ten. Mm -hmm. The mother is the oldest of nine. <laughs> so as a result, she has 50 first cousins. Oh, my goodness. When, so when she got introduced to our family, it did not phase her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just, oh, very good. Yes, I, feel, I feel exactly. At home. I feel at home. Okay, there we go. So that's, is this, that's yes, your son? Yes, that's my son. Oh, nice. And I think we also had a, a, re, a, a reception for them here. And this was back in Washington, D.C., where my, my oh, son okay. is based. Uh, this is in Alexandria, Virginia. That's my daughter, Danielle, who works at the Capitol. Okay. She is a legislative aide for one of the state senators. Oh, nice. Yeah. We got another picture there, Eric? Oh, this is um, in mom. Cebu. That's mom. Oh, that's this Cebu. was in Cebu when we visited, and uh, this was at our church temple. Oh, nice. And um, everybody came home to, um, this was in 2010 or 11. Everybody looks fresh and clean. So oh. this is the re reception that I was talking about. This okay. was at my son's reception here. We had uh, brought the family over so that her family can see for themselves what Hawaii is all about and um, so we had one here in Honolulu and another one on Maui where oh, my nice. uh, their father's family's from. Oh that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well um, just to let our viewing audience know that we wanted you know we wanted to connect for us with with uh, you know Bennett's uh, roots and looking at her family pictures because that always helps us to, as human beings to connect when we uh, see each other's families. Um, we're about ready to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to address some uh, questions concerning the Filipino community yes. that Bennett, uh, you know, with her background, we could have had a whole show regarding that, but because of where her heart is, she wants to talk about, you know, some of the things uh, going on in the Filipino community that perhaps may directly affect uh, our younger generation and how they're dealing with, you know, the world that they live in right now. And it's a very confusing time. And so we'll be back uh, with our guest, Bennett, uh, Miss Alusha. I'm your host, Walter Kavaiaya for Roots Hawaii. We're going to take a 60-second break, and we'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m., where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hi, guys. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Aloha my kako, and welcome back to our second half of today's episode entitled uh, The Life and Roots of one of Hawaii's renowned businesswoman, Annette Misalusha. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I, got, I have some questions that I'd like to, to ask of you. Our first question is, how do you instill the love of the Filipino culture with your children? You know, you start them young, obviously. 
Um, from the very beginning, you talk about how proud you are of your heritage. You talk about and feed them the food. I mean, that's always the great opener. Um, get them familiar with some of the words. You know, it's very difficult to really um, instill the language because mm -hmm. um, they may not have the ability to, to speak it. But to this day, my kids tease me and blame me for not <laughs> teaching them, honestly, because um, obviously they have, you know, cousins in the Philippines. And when I take them to the Philippines, my daughter and I just came back from the Philippines about three weeks ago. Yes. And she hadn't been back uh, three, year, three years from that time. But now I think after this year, we said, let's go make a point to, to go every year. Um, there's nothing like just being, um, you know, in, 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 in territory, in, in familiar grounds. So let me share with you a little bit about um, how I really think second generation, so like my kids are second generation, it's important for them to touch bases because they are the key to our future, to our, our community's sure. future, Walter. Think about it this way. The first um, immigrants, the first uh, generation will always be connected to the motherland mm -hmm. because especially if they've been, if they were brought here from the time they were 10, they have, you know, wonderful memories of that. So, but the second generation, they straddle two worlds, the world of their parents, which is, you know, the Philippines, and then, of course, the, the um, mainstream. And how they experience that will translate into how they raise the third generation. Right. If it was a positive experience when the third generation comes, particularly if they get married to non-Filipinos, they're still able to bring that love for that culture there. But if it was a negative experience, and mind you, there are instances when there, it has happened where we have negative stereotypes that we have to contend with. We have, you know, situations that, you know, make them distance themselves from, from, from their heritage. Whatever the case may be, when they become parents themselves, they peg themselves as local. Yeah. And they may look the part. They may mm -hmm. even have last names that are very Filipino sounding. They may have the flat noses, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they say they're local. Right. Or they'll say they're Chinese, Spanish. They're, it's a fact of our, you know, and a challenge to our community that we have uh, kids who, who deny their, their, their heritage. And hopefully, you know, we are working towards changing that paradigm. I, mean, I, I have a mirage of questions to ask. So first generation, I get that. That's the, like, you're, you're first generation first because generation. you were born in, in the Philippines? Yes. And migrated. Right, yeah. right. And your children did not have that opportunity to be born in the Philippines, to connect to the motherland. That's the second generation, mm -hmm. meaning they were born in, somewhere out of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. In this case, they were born here. But there's another, I don't know what you call it, it's kind of another... I don't know if it's a generation or another grouping, mm -hmm. and these would be uh, those uh, children, perhaps of that second generation, mm -hmm. that growing up in Hawaii, if they did not marry Filipino within that second generation mm -hmm. and ended up marrying local, even non-Filipino, mm -hmm. say Hawaiian, mm -hmm. Chinese, you know, mm -hmm. Japanese, whatever, mm -hmm. they classify. I think you were telling me this earlier that they classify themselves as. Local. local right so i so it's almost like there's three groupings within yes. this second generation you have yes and so i i'm curious to find out i mean do they all love and hug each other or are there their differences cause problem or is really key as we say in hawaiian yeah i think it's it's uh it, it's getting there where it's a positive experience i think okay for one thing the second or the third generation, there seems to be a, a trend now of embracing your identity, your, your culture. And of course, efforts in the community have contributed to that, whether it be uh, things like Sariling Gawa, or even at the community uh, colleges where they have events and, and even Operation Manong, which is at the University of Hawaii, which has been there for the last 30 years to you know, make sure that we integrate our cultural identity. And I don't mean being less American. Sure. I think sure. you can be as American as can be and then still bring and enhance that experience right. as, as whatever the ethnic group, uh, ethnic 
identity that you may, you may be part of. It's just like what the Hawaiians do. Exactly. I mean, we're Americans, but we're, we're not going to allow that, being American, mm -hmm. to cause us to separate from our Hawaiian culture and our Hawaiian heritage. There's, you can embrace a, void. The two. There's yeah. a void that's, that's uh, there if, for instance, you neglect it or you deny that. So hopefully our kids, so to your question about it being where, so I think there's a, a melding in the middle of where people love Filipino food, for instance. <laughs> and it's, do you know that it's actually emerging in the culinary you know, market as, as, a, as one that people are now wanting to taste? Because, you know, the, the Thai you know, food base, right, uh, the, right. the Chinese is all, has always been there, the Japanese. But now people are discovering the, the tastiness of Filipino food, particularly adobo. Um, in fact, um, Bon Appetit, uh, the, uh, in, in uh, their latest, I think this year's uh, uh, Foundation Awards, um, they've actually had a Filipino restaurant in Washington, D.C. Uh, and and the, the chef they're off as like the, the number one chef. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for those of you who appreciate Filipino food, ube, for instance, uh -huh. is beginning to be a very mainstream type of food. Well, I mean, and you know, in today's culinary world, there, you know, a lot of these uh, chefs of today are experimenting. Exactly. In, in, in taking some of the, like adobo, and Influences. taking it to a different level right, uh, right. for the taste buds that, that, you know, go out to the rest and of I the world. And I love it, yes. <laughs> I mean, these are comfort foods that I grow up right, with, right, and then right. I go to uh, even places like Alan Wong's, by the way. Right. He had, did you know that he had a step of, uh, father who is Filipino who actually oh, really? yes who taught him a lot so you'll see a lot of, of items in his menu that are of Filipino influence influence. because of that yes. part of his DNA correct, yeah, correct. I think that's wonderful mm -hmm. you know, getting back to I mean we may never get to the second question but you know <laughs> getting back to um, so how do you mm -hmm. um, as the as the first generation as the parent of the second generation how do you teach them to integrate? I'm curious, when you have all of these events, like you said, mm. this is a Filipino uh, month yeah. uh, in the nation. Um, do these second generation, and like your children and their children, do they, are they involved in these events? Do they, they, I mean, I see that as an avenue of partaking of the culture by right. participating. So this is very much um, instilled in them at that age. It has to be a multi-pronged approach, right? It's not right. just yeah, yeah. one, you know, end-all, be-all approach. But for me, the most significant um, action that you can take is taking them back to the Philippines. Mm. Um, I have been in situations where I have brought second or third generation Filipino Americans who may not have as much of a connection with the Philippines, and I've taken them on particularly uh, humanitarian missions. And when they come back from visiting the Philippines, they are completely transformed. Yeah. They want to um, dig deeper into their roots. They want to connect. And it's because when you're there, there is something that transforms you, that connects with your soul. And you see all these people who are just like you, and you just realize the enormity of the fact that this is where your forefathers come from. Right. And that comes to you in many fold. And then you take that gift and you bring it back home. And that's how hopefully travel, you know. Right. The other thing is I think it starts from the home. You yourself as a Filipino American has to be proud and to demonstrate and showcase that to your children. Because they may you may not necessarily say it, but the way you act it when um, so my own children sometimes is interesting. So my son had went to University of Michigan, and University of Michigan had a very strong Filipino um, uh, program, a uh, student program, that he learned to dance, Tini Kling, <laughs> learned to love everything of the Filipino food that he didn't touch before, but <laughs> because he was missing home, he started to eat all the Filipino desserts that he, in the past, maybe didn't touch too much because it was just there, right? Sure. But when you're missing home, it became such a, you know, a, something that connected you. Isn't that crazy to, to think that your son had to go to Michigan yes. to connect? Yes. But, you know, getting back to travel, back to the homeland, mm -hmm. you know, like for me, on my father's side of the family, we come from Maui, mm -hmm. and we come from a community called Kaupo. And so I, my wife and I were recently there, 
Um, and it does make a huge difference when you connect with your aina or your land. Uh, it does change your world. And so we're planning a trip. I want to take my, my, our children and our grandchildren back because they've never been there. And it's a way to make them connect. I mean, they're not un Hawaiian, mm -hmm. but this will just, you know, increase their awareness of where, where their roots come from. All right, we do. I haven't heard my uh, engineer, but I want to get to this next question there. Yeah, that's that word I want to use. That's why. What Filipino values did your parents incul inculcate in you while you were growing up that you continue to practice here in the United States or in Hawaii in your own family? And of course, these values are probably universal, not mm -hmm. necessarily just relevant to the Filipino community. Well, faith in God, first of all. Mm -hmm. My parents, my dad was one of those who would gather the whole family together. And I, I get choked up when I talk about it because it just brings back a lot of lovely memories, memories for me. Sure. Um, and gather them. And he would tell us stories about his family. And, and especially the war stories. And even if you've heard them over and over again, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, wait to hear about it. Um, and I, in my own way, has done that with my children. You know, we've, we have traditions. Do you know that one of my traditions in my family, for instance, is my, my dad would say our birth story every oh. time it's your birthday. So you get to hear how my mom had to be rushed oh, to the yeah. hospital. I was born in the middle of a, of a typhoon in the Philippines. Oh, and the goodness. typhoon's name was Agnes. Well, <laughs> for, fast forward, and of course, they, they for a minute thought that they would name me Agnes, but they didn't. They had the sense <laughs> not to do that. Well, I don't know. Because those people who are named Agnes might, <laughs> might call yeah. it. But I named after my maternal grandmother, Benita. Oh. Benita Espinelli. See, but that has more of a connection yes. to your roots. Yes, and though. so, and my father's name is Ben, so oh, okay. that kind of worked out. But to this day, my I would call my children, and whatever time zone they're in, and I would tell them their birth story. And you know, my children are thirty-two and twenty-eight now, and they look forward to it. My son. Says, Mom, you haven't called me in case I missed. And I, would, I don't want to hear that story. Exactly. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, it is. I, I, like, I like that tradition. Yes. I've never heard that before. Yes. And, you know, I, you know, it instills a certain connection to the children. And mm -hmm. then they'll pass that tradition on to their children. So. I would Hopefully hope they'll so. do that. Yes. Okay, I have some sad news. Mm. We're out of time. I know. <laughs> and we, but, so sorry. Uh, no, and so I, I, I say this not to all of my guests, but I am going to say this uh, on, on air. We have to come back sometime next, next year. It will be my and honor and pleasure. And to continue this, pleasure. but maybe we can, you can bring someone you know, directly related to what the topic yes. is. That we'll, we'll talk more off the air. Okay. Thank you so much, Annette. Mahalo, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Mahalo nui. Well, our time is gone, folks, and we want to say a big mahalo to uh, Bennett Misalusha, our guest here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kavaiaia, for Roots Hawaii. Join me next month with more interesting stories about genealogical research. Aloha no. Thank you.